What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Tropical Storm Franklin that is currently looking pretty disorganized as it's bringing heavy rain to Puerto Rico. We have Invest 92L over here. We have this new area of interest right here in the Caribbean Sea that we're going to be go ahead, going to cover all of it right here. So here's the situation we have right here. Here's Tropical Storm Franklin. Currently has winds of 50 miles per hour, down from 60 miles per hour from yesterday. And as you can see from the satellite, it looks a lot more disorganized, looks a lot more sheared for, as time continues to go on. It's really lopsided as well. And it's bringing a lot more rain, to, especially to eastern Puerto Rico and the, and the islands off the coast of Puerto Rico. So they'll have to definitely pay attention to a flooding threat. But we'll, uh, and we'll keep an eye on it for you guys as time continues to go on. Here's the latest from the public advisory. Um, Franklin currently disorganized, but still forecast to strengthen this weekend. Winds are 50 miles per hour. Gradual strengthening is forecast by tomorrow, and Franklin will likely become a hurricane over the weekend. Tropical storm force winds extend 115 miles from the center, and the pressure is 1,003 millibars. So this thing has been weakening. It's continuing to get a little more disorganized. We'll have to pay attention to it to see what happens over the next few days, but it's definitely not going away anytime soon. We also have this area of interest right here that is potentially as the biggest threat to land so far so we'll have to keep an eye on it right here i'm not entirely sure if it's an invest yet or not but we'll have to keep an eye on it yes it is invest 93 l it has been designated Invest 93L. It has a 70% chance of development in the next seven days. A broad area of low pressure over the northwestern Caribbean Sea is producing disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Environmental conditions appear conducive for gradual development of the system. And tropical development is ex uh, depression is likely to form over the weekend or early next week, while generally moving northward across the Caribbean Sea and eastern Gulf of Mexico. Interest in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, western Cuba, and Florida should monitor the progress of the system. 30% chance of formation in the next 48 hours, 70% chance in the next 7 days. I will say this, I wouldn't be surprised that by the end of the day we have a 40-80 scenario where we have a 40% chance in the next 48 hours and an 80% chance in the next 7 days. It's primarily because we are moving through very good conditions for development and we'll, we'll keep an eye on that and we'll talk about that. We have the remnants of Emily that doesn't look like it's going to really form and we have 92L that's kind of meandering in the Atlantic So and we'll continue to monitor those, see if it's going to be a threat to land, which I don't think they will but we'll go ahead and keep an eye on those for you just in case. We have the some model runs we need to show you, the European GFS, Icon, CMC, all of those right there because we're seeing a lot of interesting situations especially with 93L so here's the situation. 93L is expected to organize and develop. The Europeans having it stalling in the Caribbean or in the Yucatan Peninsula before moving into the Gulf of Mexico, where it starts organizing at a pretty quick pace, gets down to potentially minimal Category 1 hurricane strength before making landfall north of Tampa Bay, actually, according to the Zero Z European. Then it moves parallel to the Carolinas before the, a cold front pushes this out to sea. So this is something we need to continue to monitor right here. This is the biggest threat we have to land and that, and we'll also show you something interesting that I found. Here's the 12C GFS, but before we get to that, I want to go ahead and show you the 0Z GFS to kind of give you some backstory. 0Z GFS had this organizing and strengthening up to tropical storm strength before approaching Florida and maybe around the and maybe around Sarasota right here before moving there, moving parallel to the Carolinas. Here's the 6, 6Z we have right here. The 6Z showing some similar stuff, except it has it strengthening a little bit more towards potentially 50 mile per hour tropical storm strength as it impacts north of Tampa Bay, moves parallel to the Carolinas, and then gets pushed out to sea. But now here's the 12Z, and I wanted to show you this because this is a very interesting situation we have. The 12Z GFS, this has this thing organizing and developing, but then it enters the Gulf, and because it's over the loop current for so long, it starts to rapidly organize and rapidly intensify, potentially down to Category 2 strength, and impact the Florida Panhandle. So that's the big update we have from the GFS. And if that were the case, then it's going to cause a lot of inland threats, and it's also going to give it more time over water to organize and strengthen, potentially at a rapid pace. So this is something we need to monitor, and we'll also show you some of the, uh, the CMC as well to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. CMC is showing similar stuff going on. CMC is actually having this as a mid-range Category 1 impacting the Florida uh, pan pan Panhandle, excuse me, 
around August 29th as a mid-range category one hurricane around 85 mile per hour winds 990 pressure definitely something to pay attention to but I will say this if we go ahead and take a look at the global sea temperatures, which especially in the Gulf of Mexico, 30 plus degrees Celsius, 86 plus degree Fahrenheit, there's no disputing that. OHC, this thing, according to the GFS and CMC, is moving through the loop current, which if this is the case, and based on what I'm looking at, there's going to be low wind shear and a lot of moisture with this system. This could potentially organize and rapidly intensify primarily due to the warm waters, ocean heat content through the loop current. Hurricanes are notorious for rapidly intensifying in the loop current. Good, two good examples of this, Hurricane Katrina in 2005, Hurricane Rita in 2005, Hurricane Laura in 2020 is another uh, recent example, Hurricane Ida in 2021. That Those are all great examples of that happening. So we'll absolutely have to pay attention to it through the weekend and into, into the, middle, the middle of next week. So that's our big situation we have going on. Even some other models like the Navgem and the Icon are picking it up. Here's the Icon right here, the 12Z Icon to show you guys right here if this thing load uh, properly. So this thing is stalling over the near the Yucatan over the next couple of days. But then the Icon has this thing really starting to organize. It's actually matching the CMC and it's potentially going to be making landfall north of Tampa near the Florida Panhandle mid-range category one similar to what the CMC. So that's actually matching that and that's that's a pretty big right there because now we're seeing two mo uh, separate models pretty much calling for a similar situation. And if we go ahead and show you the nav gem, we'll go ahead and show you the zero Z since that's the furthest out. And then even the nav gem is showing some potential hurricane strength, although this has it making landfall just north of Tampa Bay. But all the models that I have seen are calling for at least category one strength. So this is going to highly depend on if the storm can organize properly and nothing can get in its way. Because if we go ahead and show you the shear and moisture forecast, well, the shear forecast is pretty simple right here. We'll, we'll go ahead and show you that. The shear forecast, the shear pushes further to the north as the system starts to organize and develop. But then by the time it gets to the Gulf of Mexico, that wind shear, the, the, the wind shear weakens just enough in this pocket for this thing to really take advantage, organize, and strengthen. So that's the, and then the shear that does potentially impact it will basically enhance the outflow quite a bit. So we'll have to pay attention to it as time continues to go on. This is the European uh, shear forecast. If we go ahead and show you the moisture forecast, especially, there's a little bit of dry air when it first impacts the Gulf of Mexico, but by the time it gets there and firmly establishes itself, it should be, it should not be an issue by the time it gets there and brings, starts bringing impacts to Florida. So that's our forecast right here uh, with the shear and the moisture. Uh, so there's a lot of great conditions for this thing to develop. We have 93L, current winds are 20 knots, pressure's 1,009 millibars, and even our first models are coming out, and they're indicating at least Category 1 hurricane strength. We'll have to keep you updated on that front right there and see when, the, when more intensity models come out, and we'll continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel in that regard right there. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. And if you want to come hang out with us at Storms United and see the behind the scenes and how we make these videos, feel free to join our Discord server. Link is right over there. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.